Hey everybody, my name is Reese. I'm a full-time chess teacher and candidate master, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be playing on the main account, Reese's, it's rated 2280. I know I was rated around 2300. I've had some mess ups in my audio and on the videos, so I haven't been able to show you that, but currently I'm rated 2280. We're gonna be playing a 10 minute chess game. So let's get into that right now. We have my opponent from India, 2290 rated player. Let's get into it. Okay, starting with E4. Let's see what my opponent throws at me. Okay, the Sicilian. Let's play one of the variations that I've been working on recently. I played it in some tournaments. This is the Alapin Sicilian. And I'm gonna go ahead and play the main variation. Now, we are getting into a potential um, uh, French defense advance variation, which I actually am going to talk to you guys about this in a future episode which is going to be describing the advanced variation. And I'm going to be showing you a very, very cool variation that you could play, um, a full opening repertoire against the French defense um, with this line. So I think my opponent doesn't really know what they're doing because C takes D4 is not such a good idea here. Okay. I could play bishop to D2 and exchange my my bad bishop off here. I think that makes the most amount of sense. Also, knight to c3 can't be a bad move here. Um, let's go with knight c3. I think it's this is a more, uh, I don't know, natural move, I would say. Let's see what my opponent tries to go for. Knight to e7. Okay, that's very natural. Let's swing the bishop to d3. I'm going to avoid playing a3 for a little bit and... I think this is a useful thing to avoid because, you know, maybe one day if he exchanges, I want to be able to use this a3 square for my bishop. But if I play a3, I can't use that. So I need to play quick, guys. 10 minute chess game. I need to play quick, no increment. So I'm going to castle. If my opponent castles, I might try and go for an idea like swinging my bishop back to c2 to maybe bring the queen up to d3 and try and go for a checkmate, a very quick checkmate. I know it looks a little silly, but <laughs> it might be a very powerful idea here. Let's back the bishop up to c2 and get ready. I also have this bishop on c1 still aiming at this h6 pawn. So he has to be very careful here to not, to not make too many weaknesses on his king's side. Look at this. He voluntarily exchanges. Now we have the bishop to a3 idea. Also, this pawn is controlling the b4 square. Very useful. This is looking like a picture-perfect advanced French guys picture perfect we have a much better bishop um, than his bishop on c8 okay he goes knight g6 queen d3 makes a lot of sense also a move like h4 or g3 here would be very powerful let's start with queen d3 I just need to make sure that my opponent can't do some sneaky bishop a6 type of idea but I don't think he is in time to do anything like this let's start with queen d3 and see what my opponent does. Queen d3. I'm angling for now a move like h4. h4, h5 to kick this knight back out of the position. One thing he might try here. Okay, I know what he's trying here. He's doing this. He's also going to try and maybe put the knight back on f8, which is a very sneaky strategy from him. But I enjoy the space advantage that I'm getting in this position after h5. My space advantage on the king side is huge. Okay, be very careful. Don't allow this. Let's go for... I could go just rookie one and allow bishop a6 and all this other stuff. Hmm, let's think about this here. I could also, like... I might be able to even sack and move my queen. Let him take on f1, take on g6. It looks very dangerous too, but I don't think I need to allow this. This is... Sometimes the, the better idea is just to not allow any uh, shenanigans on this side of the board. I'm going to put my queen on e3. I just feel like this is the more natural square. I want to maybe journey over here to the king's side later on. So, And, okay, he takes my pawn. Man, this guy is, uh, I don't know, extremely lucky or, or what. But I feel like somehow my attack was it's incredibly good and now it's just somehow evaporated. Don't know what happened here. Maybe we put the queen on f4, but then he's going to take my knight and then swing his queen to h4 or something like this. Where the heck did my attack go? Um, where the heck did my attack go? All right. 
maybe we play... Maybe we play knight h2 and avoid this exchange. But then queen g5, okay, but I can maybe at least capture there in that position. Maybe we avoid this exchange. Or we could take and go g3. I'm going to avoid the exchange. This, this feels to me like the most natural way to play. I'm going to try and kick this knight back out of my position and then maybe go for ideas like um, swinging this rook to h1, moving my king up maybe, and attacking down this h file. You know, he, he took my pawn on h2. He's going to have to uh, respect the fact that he opened some lines up as a result of that. So maybe we can go for this. Let's see how my opponent tries to defend his position. One normal idea that he could go for is something like f6, but this really weakens a lot of his light squares on this side of the board. Okay. Let's go for g3 and then maybe king g2 and follow it up with rook here. I think this is such a natural plan. Maybe I'm allowing him to go knight f5. I was thinking I would put my queen on f4 there. Okay, he goes back to g g6, which is what I was hoping for. Now I want to go king g2. My, my idea is that if I could put my knight on g4, I'm threatening some very nasty ideas like knight takes h6 check. Um, and then maybe I could swing my bishop into the game. Knight g4, h5. Hmm. Let's think about this. I'm going to play maybe... Hmm. I don't know. It's very weakening for him to, to, allow, to allow me to do any of this. It's very weakening. Um, I need to make a move here. Let's go with King G2. This is, this is my move that I wanted to play from a long time ago. We're going to stick with it. I'm keeping this Bishop in reserve guys. I might put it on a three, but I don't need to rush with this decision. This Bishop might actually be better going into a square like F six later on. So, and I'm keeping this Bishop. I don't want to capture on G six. It's not really worth it. F takes and opens his Rook and sure his pawns are weak, but they're not actually that weak. Okay, h5, very weakening, extremely weakening. All right, I can go rook h1 here and maybe start trying to attack. Knight f3 is another idea I could play. I could go knight f3 first or rook h1. Um, let's go for... I don't think it matters. I don't know why I'm spending so much time deciding on the difference here. Let's go knight f3. My knight is not good on h2 anymore, so I'm going to go knight f3. And let's see what my opponent does. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I got five minutes. I'm doing okay on time. Still a little, lo still a little low. My knight can go to this g5 square, which is extremely dangerous for him. And so my opponent's playing very, very badly. This is what happens sometimes when you could trick your opponent into a different um, opening, right? So this was a Sicilian and then it kind of switched into a, an advanced French and my opponent's not familiar with this opening at all. So, and I've played the advanced French for a very, very long time. So I'm, I'm happy to show this opening to you guys because I want to do a course on uh, a free, you know, course for E4 and my recommendation against the French and against the Sicilian is going to be an Alapin and then a, an advanced French um, variation against the French. So I really, I really uh, think this is a good example of how to get a very, very good uh, opening advantage against the French. Let's see what my opponent does. He has this really weak H pawn that if he allows me to capture, his king is going to be incredibly exposed here. Followed up with a move like knight to, G, knight to G5, and it's looking like the game is... Um, Going to not be so good for him. He goes queen, e7. I'm just going to go for my normal plan of trying to pile up on this h-pawn. Let's see what my opponent tries, how he tries to defend here. At some point, he's going to need to play f6, but the problem is that this knight on g6 is very loose. It's very loose. He goes f5. Wow. What a weakening move. Weakens this square. If I capture it, it opens up a lot of squares that I could start attacking from. The question is, do I want to en passant here? This is the golden question. 
Let's think about this here. Hmm. I think I do, because this opens this bishop, guys. It gives him some squares too. But I think I can start by then playing queen g5 and creating some attack on this knight and also getting ready to, to do uh, queen h5 here. Very, very dangerous idea. So I think this move makes a lot of sense. You know what? I wasn't thinking, but maybe he could take with the queen. Maybe he could have taken with the queen. Okay, I'm going to go for my idea now. Should I capture on h5 first or should I just play queen g5? I think maybe I want to go for this. Always have to be careful that he doesn't have an idea like this, but I don't think he does. Could just take on g6 there. I don't have to take the rook. Hmm. I, also, I could just take the rook. I don't even know what I'm saying. I, even thinking I could take the rook. My bishop defends my queen, right? So I can just win material there. Don't need to... Um, overthink this position. I have four minutes. I need, I need to continue playing at a, at a pace here. Okay, he's allowing me to capture this. This looks nearly lost for him. I also could take here and start threatening checks along this, this line here. That looks incredibly dangerous. This looks incredibly dangerous because I'm threatening check and then taking the knight or, or whatever else I want to do here. Yep, this looks crushing, guys. If he takes my knight... I have a force checkmate sequence. Hopefully he falls for that one and we'll be able to play it. Let's see. Let's see what's going to happen. Yep, he falls for the checkmate sequence. Do you, can you guys find the checkmate here? The checkmate in four. Pause the video, try and figure it out. The move here starting with is queen h7 check. We force the king to f7. And obviously we could take the rook, but the best move is to take the knight. And then we swing the rook to h8, forcing him to capture, and then we stick the queen on h7 with a checkmate, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this position. Stay tuned for the course. Um, I'm going to call it something like understanding the French, or the French defense, advanced variation, explained. And we go into depth on the ideas, the strategies. I'll even throw a a study link so you can look at all of my analysis in the description of that video. Um, so stay tuned for that and I will catch you guys on the next one.